Hey everyone, Beta FPV has finally decided to follow my advice by making a lightweight 2S drone in their 85mm frame. They call this the Beta 85 Pro 2, uh, but you may recognize it as a copy of my design, which I like to call the Shutterbug 85. Uh, you see, I've been building and flying drones with the same combination of parts for the last six months, and I've got a few examples of it here. You can see I've used different cameras and canopies over time, uh, but the core components have remained the same. And after six months, I can still say that the Shutterbug 85 is definitely my favorite power formula. Uh, it might even be my favorite drone overall, and that's just because of all the opportunities this has created for me and just all the fun experiences I've had along the way. So if you are new to this channel, then welcome. You can check out those other videos later. But right now I want to show you a few quick clips uh, so you can see how I've been flying these drones and why I designed it the way that I did. And then I will show you how Beta FPV's version compares to the original. And I really put this one to the test as well. So I think you're going to enjoy seeing that flight footage in just a minute. So this all started back when Beta FPV was first developing their 85X. At the time, their focus was all on making it into a 4S drone but I knew that having a light flying weight was going to be really important for the kind of flying that I like best when I'm using a whoop style frame. You see, to me, the whole point of a power whoop is to have something light enough, quiet enough, safe enough, and durable enough to fly absolutely anywhere, uh, just like you can with a whoop, but give you the power to weight ratio to do it in a really big way. I told Beta FPV right away that I thought a lightweight build with 1103s would be better than the forest drone they were planning, uh, but they weren't interested in that at the time. So when I got my hands on an early prototype of this frame, I started to do some experimentation on my own. I discovered that the 2S all-in-one is actually a really great match for these 1103 motors and 2-inch props, and it's super light. My first build like that was 39 grams, um, and I thought it flew better than any Whoop-style drone I had flown before. I liked it so much that I gave it a name and made a video, which I released the same week that the 85X went on sale. If you've been following this channel, then you know all about the Shutterbug 85. In fact, I know many of you have already built one or done a conversion from the 75X, which is almost as good. Uh, if you're one of those people, then you know firsthand just how much fun a build like this can be. And I love hearing from you guys, so go ahead and comment down below. Let us know what combination of parts you put on yours and what you like to use it for. Beta FPV saw how popular the design had gotten in the community, and so now they've decided to make it into a binded fly. It has the same combination of parts except for what's on top, the camera, VTX, and canopy. Those are the same as the 75X, and yes, this canopy is as fragile as ever. That's kind of a shame because the durability of this frame is one of the things that I really like. Uh, but in spite of that, this is still going to be the best flying power whoop that Beta FPV has ever released. And I think a lot of people are going to have fun with this. I'll put all the product links down in the video description below. Um, I don't do any of this for the money, and Beta FPV certainly doesn't pay me. But I do have the ability to collect on affiliate links. Um, so if you want to support me and this channel, you could click on those links before making a purchase, and that would be pretty cool. All right, now let me show you some brand new flight footage with this drone. I wanted to really put it to the test, so I took it to one of my favorite playground structures. You might recognize it from some of my older videos. That place is brutal on drones, but I had a ridiculous amount of fun, and I think you're going to enjoy watching this. Um, I'm going to show you a complete flight from beginning to end, crashes and recovery and all, because I think that's all part of the experience, and I think that'll give you a pretty good idea of what it's like flying one of these drones. Uh, so check this out.
I had such a blast at that park. It's been a while since I've been there, so I stayed and flew a bunch of different packs, and it kind of made me fall in love with Power Whoops all over again, um, and reminded me why I love this design so much in the first place. This frame is pretty tough, so when I see those gaps, I just go for it and don't worry too much about the consequences. It is possible to break this frame, but it takes a really impressive hit. And the props inside are pretty tough too. Um, I almost never damage these props. It is possible to get them to pop off, You'll notice there's no screws in here and you can't use any screws with these motors. Um, so my usual solution for that is to use dental floss. I made a video about that. It's easier than it sounds and it works really well so you can check that out. The canopy is definitely the weakest part. I had one good hit to that canopy early on and it just exploded. You can see it here. I replaced that canopy and flew and then that one got smashed up. You can see I put a little bit of electrical tape over it to finish flying at that park before going home. So if you like to take chances like I do and you fly with this canopy, then you're definitely going to want to get a bunch of spares. Or you could just use a different canopy altogether. I've tried several. My first build had the UR65 canopy. I've also used the Mobula 7. Both of those are really light and have adjustable up tilt. Or you could get the 75X or 85X uh, FPV edition cameras. Those have a mount for a 14x14 camera like the EOS 2, or the Runcam Nano 2 would be a much better option. Or there's options you could 3D print. Unfortunately, I don't have all those options with me to show you, but I'll leave some suggestions in the description down below. You may know that builds like this are super popular right now, uh, like the Toothpick or this Primo with the 65mm props. And for good reason, these things fly amazing. Uh, but one of the reasons I went to that playground was to give you an example of the kind of thing that I think having the ducted frame is really good for. I love this build, but I would not fly this at that playground. Um, I would end up just breaking a lot of props or ending up upside down on the ground. Um, you usually get caught on the ground with these exposed props, and so it's hard to use turtle mode. Uh, with these, I can usually just bounce off, or even if I end up upside down because of the ducks, I can almost always use turtle mode. So it's just a great experience for that kind of proximity flying. I love them both for different reasons. The flight you just saw was four and a half minutes long, which is pretty sweet. 
it looks like you're going fast in those playground structures, but it really doesn't take that much throttle, um, so it can last for quite a while. The battery I was using was a 450 milliamp hour GNB 80C 2S battery, um, and I don't have it with me at the moment, but I believe it weighs 28 grams, and you can see what it looks like here. The 85 Pro 2 does come with a battery. It's this one right here, 300 milliamp hours, 45C 2S battery. Um, this is not like their 350s. They switched to a different supplier, and this is the same supplier as the Nanotech. Um, so it's like a 45C Nanotech, and that's great news. This battery also performs really well. For the kind of flying I just showed you, uh, I would get about three minutes on one of these. It weighs less than 18 grams, making it great for flying indoors or in those even tighter locations. The drone itself weighs just over 42 and a half grams dry and a flying weight of 60.5 grams with this battery. Instead of having a battery tray, they have this strap on the bottom. Uh, it's actually really nice with this buckle so you can get it nice and secure. This strap is a little bit heavier than the Velcro cable ties that I usually use, uh, but it works great and you can put the battery in either direction depending on how you like to run your wires. If I take off the canopy, you can see it has the Z02 camera and VTX in here. The VTX is connected with wires, not header pins. The Z02 VTX is a little bit large and heavy as these things go. If you were going to build one from components, you could save uh, a gram or two by having a smaller VTX in there, but it gets the job done and it's 25 or 200 milliwatt. And this camera also gets the job done, but it doesn't have the best light handling. Um, there are other micro cameras that I like better. But it's a little hard to complain uh, because this whole drone only sells for $100 and uh, it would cost you just as much to build one. This is the 35 degree mount, but there was another mount in the box that you could switch out if you like to have less up tilt than that. It works pretty well at absorbing impacts uh, to protect the camera, but it is still possible to break this camera. I haven't done it on this drone, but I've done it on other cameras like this. Uh, if you get this bashed in so that it stays out of focus, uh, you probably can fix it, and I made a video about that as well. If you're in a crash, another thing that can happen is this camera can pop out of the mount or go crooked. Um, I used to use some rubber bands, uh, little tiny ones, to really just kind of strap it down in there. You could also break off some toothpicks or anything that size and shove them down into these two holes, and that would add a little bit more tension. When I was taking off the canopy just now, I discovered that my antenna had broken off. It solders on right here. Uh, that's never happened before with these, um, and it may have happened in my luggage, so I wouldn't blame them for that. But a little uh, dipole antenna is what's usually on here, and it just kind of rests down in this channel. This board has a built-in FR Sky receiver, and you can see the red antenna right here. The way mine came, it was just coming and wrapping over the top. That's not ideal. Uh, the antenna is really supposed to be straight, but it gets it out of the way, and I haven't had any actual problems with range. Usually when I fly this kind of a frame, I'm doing it for close proximity flying, so the range of these built-in receivers is plenty for my needs, and it does make for a light and clean build. But if you wanted to fly longer range, uh, you could certainly get the NoRx version of this flight controller and pair it with whatever receiver you want. Okay, there's one more thing you need to know, and that's that it comes with an unofficial release of Betaflight 4, and it's no longer compatible with the current Betaflight configurator. If you go to the Modes tab, it'll look broken like this. It says Betaflight 4.0.0, but it's actually a pre-release of Betaflight 4, so the feature set is somewhere between 3.5.7 and 4.0. But since it claims to be Betaflight 4 and it doesn't have all the features of Betaflight 4, that confuses the configurator. To fix it, you have two options. You can either flash the board to an official release of Betaflight, or you can use an older configurator. I verified that version 10.4.0 of the configurator works fine. That's what I used, and I'll leave a link to that where else but in the description down below. Really quickly, you can see my configuration here. I am running reverse motor direction, 8K, 8K on the PID loop, DSHOT 600 and 180 is the arming angle that lets you arm no matter how you land. And here's the PIDs and rates that I was using. Feel free to pause the video if you want that information. Also, I just talked to Patrick Clark from Project Mockingbird. He built a Shutterbug 85 a while ago, and he liked it so much that he spent the time to come up with his own custom tune for it. Now that the 85 Pro 2 is out, he's gonna test it against that and then release an official Project Mockingbird tune for this setup. So keep an eye out for that. Well, hopefully this gave you some good info on the Beta 85 Pro 2, and now you know where it came from if you didn't know that already. Uh, let me know what you think. You can leave your questions and comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, and if you know anyone else uh, who would enjoy seeing this, feel free to share the video link with them and like and subscribe. All of those things help to get the word out into the community, which is why I do this in the first place. So thanks for watching. Happy flying.